Today, we are going over malicious captchas, as in a captcha that I made malicious. <laughs> and I have a red light today because we are doing malicious activity. <laughs> um, red for red team, you know? I don't know. The vibes. The vibes. And if you don't know what a captcha is, it is that thing on websites that says verify you are human. Um, and then you click the button and then it verifies you're human. So let us walk through a demo. So story begins. I saw this post on X by John Hammond. It was regarding the Luma Stealer malware. And I can't scroll to see what he was replying to because I'm not signed in. But it is regarding the Luma Stealer malware, which Luma Stealer is an information stealer written in C language that has been available through a malware as a service model on Russian speaking forums since at least August 2022. It is believed to have been developed by the threat actor Shamil, who goes by the alias Luma. Luma Stealer primarily targets cryptocurrency wallets and two factor authentication browser extensions before ultimately stealing sensitive information from the victim's machine. Once the target data is obtained, it is exfiltrated to a C2 server via HTTP post request using the user agent Tesla Browser 5.5. The stealer also features a non-resident loader that is capable of delivering additional payloads via EXE, DLL, and PowerShell. So then I looked at this article, Anatomy of a Luma Stealer Attack via Fake Captcha Pages Part 1. So pretty much you click on a captcha, then the user is instructed to paste the code that is copied to the clipboard into the run window, enter. And then in this case, it um, retrieves the Luma file and executes it. But for my purposes, we are doing a reverse shell. But before we do the reverse shell, let me show you a simple example of how this works. So you edit this function, stage clipboard. I added this the command you want to copy calc and it's just going to open the calculator and you add text to copy equals you add the variable in here and for the calculator command that's kind of all you really do so so for the calculator demo click windows key r control v enter and it runs the calc command and then the calculator pops up calc this command now, for my purposes, we are doing a reverse shell. So let us open our virtual machines. So we have Kali open. What you're going to need, you're going to need index.html. Download it from John Hammond GitHub. And you're going to need a reverse shell script in PowerShell. So let's open. So pretty much use the script. I'm going to post a link to the script on my GitHub. If you want to check it out, I'll put the link in the description. But if you want to use a different script, just look up PowerShell reverse shell scripts. There's plenty of them. But I just edited this IP to be my Kali IP. And then the port, just like for you can do whatever port you want, whatever number you desire. And index.html. This will also be on my GitHub. But you're going to add this reverse shell command equals this huge command and you're going to put the url of your http server reverse shell ps1 because what the script is going to do it's going to retrieve that reverse shell script that i just showed from your server and then execute it on the target's machine so oh yeah and then add it in here too so you're adding reverse shell command this in John Hammond's HTML. So just put that in whatever folder you want. I just put mine uh, in root. So you have those. Now you are going to start a web server. And then this is the command to launch your web server, python 3 m -http .server 8080 which means it's just a locally run web server. And it's started. So you have your web server running. We're going to go to the Windows VM over here. Let me do a little split screen. Open up your browser of choice 
and here is your captcha and if you saved your scripts in a different folder you have to um, change directories in Kali to the folder and then launch the HTTP server um, just in case you're having trouble launching it. So we have our website are running and if we view page source, scroll down, here is our PowerShell command. Let me full screen that. That's kind of hard to see, but this is the script that we edited in the HTML and this is just our HTML. And this is just the index.html that we have on our Kali. So it all just translates over once you start that web server. So we have this little capture here. Let me make that big. Let me make that big. That's a little janky, but we're going to go with it. Now we set up a listener on Kali. So we do this command for the port from the script and it's listening. So we click, I am not a robot. The verification window pops up. Windows key R, control V, enter. PowerShell opens. Weird. What is my Windows security? Is my Defender on again? That was the issue. My Defender turned itself on. Now it's off. Let me see something. Make sure you disable real-time monitoring because that will stop the execution of the script. So now that we got that turned off, let us do it again. PowerShell opens. There we go. Connection. Oh, wait. Let me get let me explain Kali. It looks a little janky, but bear with me. So on this side, the HTTP side, we have git reverse shell dot ps1 HTTP 1.1200. So we're doing a git request 200 successful. So we successfully got the PowerShell script from the web server. And then now we have a shell. So if we go Windows system 32 Windows PowerShell. So if we go, who am I? You see the name of my VM, which is your mom. I have fun with naming my VMs, don't judge. So that's how you would get a reverse shell using a little captcha. So just a quick little demo. The link to index.html is on John Hammond's GitHub. And then the edited HTML is on my GitHub. Go to his GitHub, get his index.html, go to my GitHub, get my little edits. Then paste my edits in your index.html on your Kali machine. Then get my PowerShell script, reverse shell, from my GitHub. Get it on your little machine or Google. I'm not picky, but it's probably easier just to get it from my GitHub. Put it on your little machine, the HTTP server, and get a little reverse shell. Hope you guys got something out of that. Um, this was a pretty fun project for me. Stayed up until night working on it. And I don't know. It was fun. So being creative with technology, my, my fave things like subscribe, punch that subscribe button in the face and please do this legally as always VMs contained environment. This is all perfectly legal if you do it in a VM. So YouTube audience do these things in a VM and it is legal. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.